Hi, good evening viewers. Welcome back to Mount Zion. We are glad that you are joining us once again. So we are going to part two of this um, sermonette tonight. And so we want to see, how did Abraham know that this is Canaan? Whereas God had not told him that I was going to take him to Canaan. He didn't know. God did not tell him, I will take you to Canaan. God said, I will take you to a place. I will show you the place. I just want you to get out of here and go to another place where I will show you. And so we're going to talk about a few things and, and you're going to be fine. So that next year when God is telling you, move this job to a job that I, I will show you, you will also not miss your mark. You will not miss the job that God is taking you to. Some of you will be houses, you'll be shifting houses. You will not shift uh, to the wrong house. Some of us, it will be God sending us to people to lay our hands on them. You will not miss out on that instruction when it is time uh, to do that. So number one is that Abraham... Immediately he had God, he began to walk in faith. Faith is trusting God and knowing that God is able to take you to that place. Faith is total obedience to what God is telling you to do. Faith is when you're in a place where you're in Hebrews 11 and saying faith is the evidence of things not seen. Those things are not being seen, but you have an evidence of them. Faith is when you know that Jesus died for you. You've never met Jesus, but you totally believe. You have a deep conviction that indeed Jesus died for you. Faith is believing without any shadow of doubt that God loves you. You've never met God anywhere but you know that God loves you and you believe in John 3 16 and so Abraham was a man who was commended by God for his faith total trust in God that when God told him that I will show you the place Abraham was like good pack my bags and let us move to that land and Abraham's faith connected him to God that when he got to the land of Canaan he settled and he said this is the land he knew that that was the land because he had connected himself with God and God was guiding him and can I submit to you can I submit to you that Abraham was a man who was visited by angels Angels walked to him and the Bible says, and the angel of the Lord appeared to Abraham. Now the Bible says that God is the same yesterday. He's the same today. He shall be the same forevermore. When we walk in obedience to God, guess what? The angel of the Lord will appear to you. There are different, there are major differences when the Bible says, and angels appeared. And there's a major difference when the Bible says that the angel of the Lord appeared to you. So Abraham goes to the land of Canaan and guess what? A man who only had a wife, a nephew and a few possessions settles in a place and this man begins to prosper. There are things that I also want to show you why God had to move Lot from his father's land to a land where he was, um, he was supposed to settle. Now, we know that Terah, Abraham's father, was an idol worshiper. And that is one of the reasons why God had to remove Abraham from a place of idol worship and take him to a place where Abraham would know God for himself. Any time you are an idol worshiper, you are in the wrong place and God is not going to speak to you. You're going to say, oh, but I don't worship idols. I go to church every Sunday. We have made so many things our idols in our time. Most of us is money, money. You know that in your church on Wednesday evening, you have a prayer service. You will never show up. Why? Because you want to be at work. Maybe, maybe you want to work overtime or maybe you just can't close your business because you just want to be there and you have made your God the God of gold. You cannot leave your place of work because you just want to make more money. For some of us, our idols are family. Oh, you just want to hang out with family that you cannot be obedient to God. You just want to stay with them. Abraham will have told God, oh, but you know, this is my father's land. This is where all of us are staying together. Some of us, because of family, we cannot hear God. We cannot be obedient to God because we have idolized our families. Number three, property. Some of us are given material things by God which I can call them presents. And some of us will forfeit God because of the presence that he has given us. What is important to us is the presence of God, that we are with God, not the things that God gives us. Because you know one thing, no one dies and takes anything to heaven. The things that God gives us are for this earthly journey. Beyond that, you don't even tell people, bury me in my best shirt because it cannot be done. So we have to leave the place 
of idol worship where we are so tied to the material things that God has given us. It's like giving a child a sweet and then you tell the child, give me the sweet back and they don't want to give it back to you. Yet you're the one who gave them the sweet. So if the child doesn't want to give you back the sweet, he doesn't know or she doesn't know, maybe you have a hundred other sweets that you wanted to give him. And all you're trying to see is to see, is it easy for you to give back what you have given to me? Most of us will never leave our material things to go and seek God. It is time for us in 2019 to decide to make up our minds that we will pursue God, that we will walk away from idol worship. We will walk away from things that do not make sense to us and we will pursue God. Idol number three is that we have become too wise for God ourselves. We are too wise, absolutely wise. When God tells you something, you begin to argue with God, telling God, God, do you know that this is how the stock market is going? God, do you know that these are the companies that are employing people? God, do you know that these are the businesses that are making money? We are too wise for God to a place where we are destroying ourselves, that our wisdom is self-destructive. And that our wisdom, our carnal wisdom becomes a God to us. It is time for us to tell God, give us your wisdom because your wisdom is what is going to move me forward. Number two, when God tells Abram to move from his father's land, God does something else. He changes his name. Along this journey, God tells Abram, you will not be called Abram anymore, but I will call you Abraham. Your wife will not be called Sarai anymore, but she shall be called Sarah. When you move with God, he changes your name. Maybe people know you today for hustling. Maybe people know you today for sickness, disease, and infirmity. Maybe today people know you for the person who anytime they see your phone call, they know it's a prayer point, it's a prayer request. There are things that people have associated you with. And God is calling you out of the place where people have associated you with negativity to a place where people will know that God has changed your name. God wants to change your name. When God is moving you from where you are to where you ought to be, he will change your name. He will change what people know you for and you will become a person whose name is changed. Do you want God to change your name in 2019? It is time to begin to walk in obedience to the things that God has told you to. Amen. Number three, when God is telling Abraham to move from his father's land, there was a curse of premature death. The Bible says, that Lot's brother, uh, sorry, Abraham's brother, who was Lot's father, had already died. That means Terah had already buried a child. Lot's father. And when God looks at this, he says, no, this is going to be the father of many nations. And for him to fulfill that assignment, for him to fulfill that commandment, for him to enjoy the blessing of being a father to many nations, I have to uproot him to a, from a place of premature death and take him to a place where he will not be buried and where he will not bury his children. And we see that when Abraham moves forward, Abraham does not bury Isaac. Isaac does not bury Jacob. Jacob does not bury Joseph, even when it is thought and perceived that Joseph was dead. Joseph does not bury his sons Manasseh and Ephraim. We see that there is a reversal of what used to be there. Terah, the father of Abraham, buries the son. Abraham moves in obedience to God and does not bury his children. When you obey God, you should enjoy a reversal of generational curses. Most of us pray and break generational curses, but we are not willing, we are not ready to listen to God. You can pray all you want, but until you are obedient to what God has told you to do, there are many things that you will pray for in 2018 and carry them over to 2019, carry them over from 2019 to 2020. It's not that God doesn't hear your prayers, it's that when you pray to God, what comes down to you is an instruction. The other thing that I want us to talk about is that Abraham's spirituality was upgraded. Abraham moves from a place where they worshipped idols and he moves from idol worship. Guess what? Abraham moves to a place where the angels of the Lord begin to meet him. When God changes your place, he upgrades your spirituality. You move from a place where you're calling people and saying, what is the Lord saying about this season? What is the Lord saying about 2019? To a place where God is telling you about what he will do in 2019. When Abraham and Lot go separate ways, Lot looks at Sodom and Gomorrah and says, that's the place that I'm going to go to. And God visits Abraham to tell him that I am come down to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah because their sin is too much. 
God does not tell Lot that I am coming to distress Sodom and Gomorrah. God talks to Abraham because when God spoke to Abraham the first time and Abraham was obedient, he was upgraded spiritually and he became a man that God will tell things that he wants to do. We know that the Bible says that God will not do anything before he tells his prophets, before he tells his servants what he wants to do. He's not going to do it. Anything that has happened on earth, there is somebody who has known it. And that is God's prophet. God always tells his people what he's about to do. He never catches them by surprise. That is how faithful God is. So, Lot's life is saved by a man who hears God. And when God says that he's going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, Abraham rises and says, oh my God, and on his journey to Sodom and Gomorrah, he begins to ask God, if you find 50 people who are righteous, will you destroy the city? No. Th 40? No. 35? No. 30? No. And then just because of Abraham, one man Lot is saved by angels of God. The Bible says the angels of God goes to Lot's house and they save him. And, and, and if you read it, you will realize that the sin was so much that the men wanted to rape the angels of God. And Lot said, no, don't rape the angels. Just come and take my daughters because they have not known any man. And, they, and the men were like, no, we want, your, we want the men that have come. But can I tell you something? These angels blind the men who are trying to push the door, take Lot and his family out. And the other instruction that the angels give to Lot is that as you go, do not look back. Unfortunately, Lot's wife looks back and, he and she becomes a pillar of salt that remains to this day. God's instruction is what will move you from where you are to where you ought to be in 2019. God's instruction, when obeyed, upgrades your spirituality, reverses generational curses, changes your name, changes you from being a person who is known for negativity to a person who is known for positivities. When you obey God, he changes your physical location to a place that you enjoy goodness, to a place where you flourish, to a place where you thrive. Maybe you're watching me and you're saying, oh God, I want to enjoy 2019, but you do not know God. God's instruction for us through Jesus Christ, Jesus said that all men shall be, must be saved. And so you do not know Jesus, say sh this short prayer with me and you will be saved. And in 2019, I see God upgrade your spirituality. God change your name. Say with me, dear Lord Jesus, I come before you. I acknowledge that I am a sinner. Wash me by the blood of Jesus Christ. Remove my name from the book of death and write my name in the book of life. I am born again. Thank you so much. You are born again. I just want to pray for you. Almighty God, as your people have listened to your word, as you changed Abraham's life by one instruction, may you change their lives in 2019 by the instructions that you will give to them. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. Thank you so much for watching Mount Zion. On Monday, let's meet again at 9.35 as you watch Mount Zion. Stay blessed.